my lovely, lovely imps. How are you doing today? Uh, today, we are talking about a whole bunch of different topics, a lot of which have to do with Biden. And uh, I have been very interested in the mechanical ways by which Democrats have any path to pressure Biden to step down. Um, Biden is currently polling disastrously. Uh, public sentiment around Biden is horrible. Media sentiment around Biden is horrible. It's the worst that it's ever been. Um, he is not doing good. Um, and at the moment, the entire inner circle of Biden's admin is aggressively, and I mean aggressively, refusing to even consider the fact that perhaps we might be in a little bit of trouble as Joe Biden's own decisions are putting him uh, into a position where he might lose to Trump. Given that uh, myself, my community, and many more are heavily invested in not having a uh, deranged, criminal, fascist, psychopath like Donald Trump in power, um, I think that it's important that we learn all that we can on this particular issue and see if there's any way that we can impact it. Today, I wanted to react to a segment that was made and recommended to me, uh, was recommended to me and was made by uh, Kyle Kalinske over at the Secular Talk show. Um, I have disagreed with Kyle Kalinske and, agree and agreed with him at various points in the past. Uh, we definitely tend to have a slightly different approach to politics, um, but I am very interested to see what he has to say because he put out a video describing how mechanically the Democrats might be able to oust Joe Biden as the primary nominee. So without any further ado, let's watch Kyle Kalinske's video on this. This video is titled, Are the Dems Staging a Convention Coup of Biden? by the Kyle Kalinske Show. Let's do this. Planning a convention coup of Joe Biden. This is now a serious question that we need to discuss. This was unthinkable like a month ago. Unthinkable like three weeks ago, right? But now it's in the realm of possibility that Democrats are going to plan a convention coup of Joe Biden. So this is a very notable tweet here, a couple tweets here from Congressman Brad Sherman. So he comes out and says the following. He's a Democrat. I look forward to seeing President Biden's taped interview with George Stephanopoulos. More on that in a second. I'm going to show you that interview and I'm going to break down for you the tsunami of Democrats who have now come out against Biden. For those who've been following my channel, we reacted to the full interview. It was not good. It was a absolute disaster. It was uh, as bad as the debate. Um, and this was a pre-recorded interview, not a live interview. And Joe Biden was still very clearly struggling. He was mumbling. He was completely incoherent at points. It was disastrous. Um, I, I really don't know how anybody can watch that. But if you don't believe me, go watch my video uh, on exactly that subject. Anyway, let's continue. But he says, I look forward to seeing President Biden's taped interview with George Stephanopoulos. It's important that the president also have an extended live interview as soon as possible. In other words, he's like, we're not buying that you're really cognitively all there. You really have to prove it to us because right now it looks like the opposite is true. Counter to popular belief, the rules of the Democratic Party do not require that pledge delegates vote for Biden at the convention. All right. That's what I was saying uh, slightly before, if you're watching this live, or if you're watching this as a video, uh, it would be in the VOD. But I was saying that uh, my understanding of the convention was that uh, Biden is just sort of a uh, nominee elect and that the, the delegates can actually decide whoever they want to vote for based on the facts at the time. They are not truly locked into those positions by any sort of party uh, rules or by federal law. Anyway, let's continue. Party rules require delegates votes reflect, quote, reflect the sentiments of those who elected them at the time the delegates cast their ballots. Democratic primary voters have one overarching sentiment. We need a candidate who will beat Donald Trump. In other words, what he's saying is, to put it in layman's terms, pledged delegates are not actually pledged to you. And we can do whatever the fuck we want with them. And if we decide we think it's impossible for you to beat Donald Trump, your ass is going, going, gonzies. That's what he's saying. 
Okay. Now I have a lot of thoughts about this, man. I don't like that precedent. I really don't. To say that pledged delegates aren't pledged, it's not... That was my immediate thought as well. However, um, it's always been like that. Like, we always knew that was the case, right? That, like, I mean, that's how these parties function. It's not just a matter of precedent. It's a matter of structure. Like, that's a problem in party systems. It's not a... Anything that's not, like, you know, pinned down and even then can, you know, pinned down in, in on paper, written down on paper and signed, uh, even that can be bent. But we know that when it's uh, when there are party structures like this, like, they'll pull out all the stops. It's like, this is a handshake agreement. The structure was a problem. But anyway, let's continue. It's that hard to imagine a scenario where an actual lefty wins a primary. Yep, exactly. And then, what? Yep. The party elites can get together and say, well, since we don't think this person can beat the Republican, even if they have the best chance of beating the Republican, we don't think they can, therefore, sorry, we're just going to override the will of the voters and put in this more centrist establishment candidate, this more corporate candidate, because we prefer them. So I don't like this precedent. Back when it was Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton was ahead, everybody and their mothers, no, 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 pledge, they'll get your pledge. They're pledged. They're pledged. They're pledged. They can't change it. You can't have a contested convention. What are we talking about here? Don't be silly. But now we're looking at a scenario where, and look, to be fair to them, uh, it's true that I think their concern is genuinely like, his brain's not working, we think he's guaranteed to lose, and so we need to act. I understand that. But guys, this all should have been considered when the media and the establishment Democrats and the donors coalesced to crush a primary against Biden. That is a, a very good point. However, on the contrary, that was then and this is now we got to kind of do what we got to do. It also, that was also previous to some other major decisions that have happened since then. The playing field has completely changed, especially when you consider what has, what decisions have been made by the Supreme Court since then. So it is a different game, but I agree. It was absolutely twisted uh, that Joe Biden, uh, uh, that the Democratic Party basically um, crushed all opposition to uh, Biden earlier on. But anyway, let's continue. See, that's the thing. It's like they rigged it up front for Biden by crushing the prospect of a primary. And then now, like, the chickens are coming home to roost because they realized they made a mistake, and now they need to double rig it in order to, like, try to get out of this scot-free. Look, I'm not saying I don't think Biden should step down. I think he should step down. Well, see, I feel like that argument just says, like, well, it's already rigged anyway, so principle is out the window. If principle is out the window, who gives a, who gives a damn, right? And you do what you got to do to win at that point, and principle has never been in the window. Yeah, but, yeah. But, I mean, I think the way to do that at this point is he needs to be convinced, you got to go, bro. He's got to come out on his own volition and say, all right, you guys are right. I, you know, I can see the plummeting polls. I could see my 37% uh, favorability rating. I can see um, that uh, we're in a very, very bad place right now. And I know, I know it seems impossible, and maybe it is, to convince Biden of that. But if it just goes to a convention and they just steal it, then they are saying we can always override the will of voters if we so please. Now, which they can. That's the whole thing. The, the, the area where I, I, I think his point is a little bit undermined here is the fact that um, they already can do that. They're openly saying they can do that, and they're openly saying they always could do that. So that's already done. That ship has sailed. Now it's just what can they do and what should they do in order to solve the situation. My fear is that they will do nothing. That out of fear, they will do nothing at all whatsoever joe biden is not going to step down as it as it currently stands a lot of people have come out against him and he is completely dug in uh it is going to in my opinion there is almost no path in the future that does not involve putting serious pressure on biden now whether it will be enough pressure that he personally chooses to step down or whether it will have to go to the point of like deposing him in some way uh, I hope that we can do the first one, but I don't believe that's going to happen. Regardless, pressure must be applied.
By the way, it's a, again, it's different in this scenario because was Biden really the will of the voters? Well, I just told you. The establishment Democrats, the moneyed interests, they and the media, they basically rigged the primary. Literally, North Carolina and Florida and one other state, I think, just canceled their primary and said there is no primary, right? In New Hampshire, um, you know, there was that big fight about who goes first, South Carolina or New Hampshire. And at the same time, the Biden team tried to say the New Hampshire vote doesn't count. They also were telling people to write him in. Like, they pulled so many Weasley tricks, and the media treated all of his opponents as a, just a laughing stock and a clown show. Marianne didn't get a fair shot. Even Dean Phillips didn't get a fair shot. Of course, Cenk Uger didn't get a fair shot. Like, so, again, they rigged the primary up front. They ushered him through. They just anointed him. And then now they're realizing, hey, that was a mistake. So because their prior rigging didn't work out for them, now they're saying, well, let's rig it again, uh, you know, at the convention. No, if, if he's going to go... I'm sorry, but I, I really... I disagree with, with Kyle on this particular thing. If everything that he just said indicates that we shouldn't care at all about supposed precedent and, and, well, and good behavior, the good behavior is long gone. It's been gone for a while. All that matters now is whether or not Donald Trump is prevented by having a better candidate than Joe Biden. But let's hear him out. Let's hear him out the rest of the way. I think it's got to be Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, uh, Jill Biden, his staffers, the entire... Like, okay, what happens in a scenario where the entire Democratic caucus, we get 100% of them, they come out and they say, look, man, you're done here. You're done here. There's, there's no hope. The numbers are too low. Uh, now you're affecting our down-ballot races. We're just not going to stand for it. In a scenario like that, is it possible he's just still bull in a china shop and he... It goes ahead at 100 miles an hour. It's possible, but you have to imagine there is some tipping point, right? There's if not necessarily. I don't know. That's the thing. I want to believe. I, I would like to believe that there's a tipping point somewhere, but where and and when? Who could who could look at his debate performance and then his interview performance in a pre-recorded interview and go? Everything's okay. No one in their right mind can do that. Nobody was. It's only with a a extreme amount of uh, of of uh, you know bending people's arms that people are now going. Ah, actually, no, 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 no. Actually, the debate was fine. Ah, the debate was totally. Oh, it's totally okay. The minute the debate happened, everyone went. Oh dear God! And there was a mass panic because n no one could deny. It is it is a undeniable situation, and now the like you know the 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 goons are stepping in and going, you really don't want to cross us, and now they're going, oh okay, actually the debate was fine, guys. And Joe Biden doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. He's just sitting there repeating, going, I won't let my legacy be tarnished. If you lose the media all of your big money corporate donors and the entire party establishment. I mean, how long can you last in that scenario? Because then it also becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy too. Javier Val Valenzuela says, I disagree with Demon Mama here. The Dems have to believe, they have to try to keep it somewhat hush-hush that they can't fully and blatantly do that in the open or potentially get a second fast party. Are we watching the same video? With all due respect, we just went through an entire segment segment outlining how they already just ignore all of their own rules and handshakes to begin with. Why is one more handshake, and the, why is the uncomfortable handshake the one that everyone goes, ah, we can't break that one. We'll be willing to break all of the other ones, but this one, mm, that one's on, ugh, that one takes a little pressure. Uh, the state of the Democratic Party is already trash. Now we are, it's, it's crazy how uh, we're, everyone's always like, vote blue no matter who, it doesn't matter. I'd vote for a garbage can. I'd vote for a, a ham sandwich over Donald Trump. But then when it says, oh, but would you break a handshake agreement within the Democratic Party? It's like, ah, it's a road too far. Donald Trump set up a completely slanted uh, uh, Supreme Court, a Supreme Court which is now making blatantly partisan, twistedly partisan um, uh, rulings that favor 
and are selectively des and are designed to selectively uh, be enforced only against Democrats, only to the detriment of everyone who's not a corporation or a member of the GOP. And 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 de Democrats are still hand wringing about pulling out the stops in order to do what is necessary to win. Joe Biden was just given the Chevron decision, which says that the president can do basically whatever and not face criminal prosecution. They should immediately use that to undermine that decision. The reality, of course, the overarching uh, realization for everyone should be that the federal political system is totally rotten. This reveals that it is completely rotten already. All that matters now is making sure that the least damage is done as it, as it caves in like a moldy pumpkin. And your polls go down because of your poor performance and your bad brain. And then they also, in turn, go down because the rest of the party establishment is now dumping on you 24-7, right? So I would rather see it go like that than have it be the case that at the convention, they effectively say pledge delegates aren't pledged because we say so. Because again, they already said that you just read a, a high up Democrat saying exactly that they already said it. It's already the damage is already done. The illusion, and that's what it is, an illusion, a lie remains a lie. The illusion has been shattered. Then in the future, I guarantee you that would be used in way more nefarious ways than this. This way, it's only semi-nefarious, right? Because they rigged it up front, and now they're just trying to double- No, it's not semi-nefarious. It is nefarious. It's, it's nefarious. It's just nefarious. We're talking about nefarious versus also nefarious, but nefarious that ensures that Donald Trump isn't president. This is a very strange direction. We'll rig it to undo the previous rigging because the guy's so old that he's sundowning, right? So- but in the future, I could totally see them breaking this out for, you know, maybe some good lefty candidate wins the primary, right? Maybe it's a Tim Waltz. With okay, this is where, this is one of the areas where, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I have a different approach to politics than Kyle Kalinske. Because I, I feel like when you're staring down the barrel of uh, a, a second Trump presidency where they have, ex where... Trump and his loyalists have explicitly said we are going to use military and presidential authority to disassemble democracy as you know it when uh, the biggest players in the Trump verse are saying um, this is the second American revolution and it will be bloodless as long as the lefties basically lay down when they are saying those things and you st you're staring down the barrel of that gun and you go well what if there's a lefty in the future and the democratic's the Democratic Party undermines them. They've already done that. They did it to Bernie. They do it all the time. That's all they ever do. That's all, they literally, their entire system is designed to prevent lefties from getting any power within the Democratic Party. That machine does not serve you and it cannot serve you. It is built to reject you. It's like, you know, it's like being a, uh, you are a bacteria to them and the immune system will kill you. Let's go. He's the Democratic primary, and, you know, he's got politics like Bernie Sanders or to the left of Bernie Sanders. And they go, yeah, we think you're too far left and you're an electoral liability, even though you're not. So we're just going to go ahead and switch you out for, you know, whatever, fill in the blank with, with some corporate Democrat hack. So I really, really don't like. You mean like they did? Like that precedent. That being said, I do want him to step down. It's just got to be done in a way where it doesn't get all the way to the convention and we pretend like pledge delegates aren't actually pledged, right? Because it, And it's also kind of ironic to say, um, we need to save democracy. Us Democrats need to save democracy. And in order to do that, we rigged the primary for Joe Biden and then we double rigged it and kicked Joe Biden off at the, <laughs> at the convention and just ran, picked some other person who we wanted, insider party elise. I don't like that. I don't like that. All this stuff is uncharted territory. But the fact that a Democrat is coming out and saying this, this is a big deal. Because that if he's saying it, that means there are conversations behind the scenes. It's not just him. It's him and Lord knows how many other Democratic Congress people who are like, his poor performance is affecting me. Maybe we will press the red button. 
do the nuclear option, and even at the convention say, pledge delegates aren't pledged, uh, you know, we're going to pick somebody else. So, again, uncharted territory here. Wild stuff. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. Well, Kyle Kalinske, obviously we have some disagreements. I appreciate the video, and I do think that it was illuminating on the fact that in within the party they have acknowledged that the rules already exist for them to do it. I believe it would be unbelievably foolish for them to not use that thing. Not that I have a say, because I'm obviously not the type of person who's allowed to have a say in the Democratic Party in any meaningful way, and clearly neither is Kyle Kalinske. Um, I, I don't agree with Kyle Kalinske's conclusion that we shouldn't do it. I think that there is no option but to use every tool uh, in front of us uh, to, uh, to defeat Donald Trump. Uh, but I don't think the Democratic Party agrees. Um, they're totally willing to, uh, I mean, this is the problem, right? The reason why it was rigged for Biden is because Biden is in control of, Demo of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is not Democratic internally. It's not Democratic externally either, but it's not internally Democratic. We, they already openly acknowledge that whoever's in charge of it at the time is basically the king. And he decided he would win the primary because they didn't need to have any contest. And so he did. And now the Democratic Party is having to uh, acknowledge the fact that they are stuck with a mad king and that they did not build in any systems by which to deal with it. It's a really bad situation to be in. And I think that it's going to require uh, uh, a large amount of defection. Because otherwise, things are looking really bad for November. Uh, I definitely think uh, that was an interesting analysis, and uh, uh, and I'm glad that we reacted to it. Even if I uh, think that Kyle's argument kind of uh, sets up all of the evidence that says that it doesn't matter, that the rules literally do not matter anymore, uh, that all that matters is a victory, uh, especially when you're staring down the barrel of uh, Donald Trump presidency where they have like I said, openly said that they're going to uh, completely disregard democratic norms. Um, but the, the thing that I think everyone really should take away from this entire situation is just how bad it really has gotten on the federal level. That there is no, there is not even the facade of democracy on the federal level. If it ever existed to begin with, it is completely and utterly gone. And people need to act accordingly. If people do not acknowledge this fact, it will lead us to our graves. The more people who are willing to acknowledge and not pretend and not delude themselves and not, uh, you know, uh, uh, desperately pray into the corner, but instead go, oh my God, the federal, federal politics in the U.S. is completely uh, blown up beyond all recognition. We need to start changing our political approach now. The, the more people that do that, the sooner it happens, the better off people will be and the safer more people will be anyway thanks for watching really enjoyed this segment we're gonna have a lot more coming up in just a second <laughs>